pearls, pearls and more pearls. I am absolutely loving this trend of layered pearl necklaces that I'm seeing at the moment and today I'm going to show you two ways that you can incorporate that into your style. Hello, welcome to The Stylish Maker, my name's Carol. I'm going to make two pieces today that follow that multi-strand pearl necklace trend and they are both absolutely stunning in my opinion and you can actually wear both of them together as well for an even more over the top look. Let's get making. I have this beautiful cabochon pendant and it has a connect on all four sides and it actually has three loops on either side as well so lots of places to connect to and what I'm going to do is put this pearl on top of it and I'm going to use my E6000 to do that. All I'm going to do is take some E6000 and I'm going to apply it to the pendant and then I'm going to pop on my pearl and I'm going to leave it until it is set. I actually did one yesterday so that it was already set for you and here it is. I think it's absolutely gorgeous and that's going to be the centerpiece of my first necklace. This is going to be a three strand necklace and I'm going to use some tiger tail to string my pearls. Now I've actually got a 0.38 millimeter one here. Okay, so I'm just gonna take some and I probably need about 30 to 40 centimeters. I always err on the side of cutting too much rather than too little because you want some extra to work with. Now the first thing I'm going to do is attach it to my pearl here. So I'm going to take my crimp tube and I'm going to feed it onto my tiger tail. Now this is a magical crimp tube and I'm going to use my magical crimping pliers to crimp it. And then I'm going to feed it through the loop of my cabochon, the centre one there, and then back down through the crimp tube. Like that. And now I'm going to give my crimping crimp tube a squeeze with my crimping pliers. If you haven't seen the magical crimping pliers before I'll leave you a link to a video all about how to use them. Now my magical crimping pliers should give me a nice round crimp like a bead but if it doesn't look that pretty I'm not opposed to covering it up with a crimp cover and I'm just going round and round trying to make it nice and round and then I'm going to test it to make sure it's nicely stuck there. <laughs> Some people tell me that they have issues with the magical crimping plier and I think it depends on the length of the crimp tube that you use and that's why using the magical crimping uh, crimps with the crimping plier works best. I have used it with other crimp tubes as well. There is my first one and I'm going to do that two more times on either side. There is my pendant with the three pieces of tiger tail attached. Now I'm going to string on some beads, but before I do that, I'm actually going to trim these tails a little bit because they're quite long. I'm going to start off with some of my six millimeter pearls. I've got some sixes, some eights, and I've got two 12s here. I'm going to string on two of my six millimeter pearls. Now what I do find with these pearls, because they're glass and they are coated, sometimes the holes need a little bit of a poke through with a uh, head pin or something just to get the, the hole opened. These are actually the colour peach, but you could use white for this as well. And I'm just making sure that I feed that tail over, oh sorry, inside the pearls. And I'm going to do that on all of my three strands. And that is what I have so far. Next I'm going to use one of these rhinestone connectors and I'm going to feed that on making sure I get it on the right way. So I need to take my top one and put it on the top side or top through the top hole and then my next one same thing through the center hole third one through the other hole. <laughs> That's what I have now. Next I'm going to string five more on each of the three strands of the six millimeter.
So that's what I have now. Next, I'm going to add to the center one, three of my eight millimeter pearls. These pearls are flying around all over the place. So that's what that looks like. And now I'm going to add one of my 12 millimeter pearls to the outside strands. And there we go. Next, I'm going to add two of the eight millimeters to the outside strands. And that is what I have now. Next, I'm going to add some, three, some of the six millimeter pearls to bring it back to the same length. So I'm going to add two to each of my outer strands and three to my center one. And that's what I have now. Next, I'm going to put on another spacer bar. So once again, I need to make sure it, I get it the right way up and I don't cross the strands. So there we go, that's what we have now. Isn't this looking gorgeous? I absolutely love the variations in the pearls and these glass pearls, even though they are machine made, some of them are a little bit odd in shape. If you look at this one here, it's kind of, it's not quite so round as the others. So it's kind of cool. It gives it that more authentic look, even though we all know they're glass pearls. I'm going to add two six millimeter pearls to each strand. There it is now. Next, I'm going to add 11 of my eight millimeter pearls to each strand. Okay, there's my necklace so far. I think it's so pretty. And now I'm going to repeat all of that for the other side. There is my necklace all strung up and I think it's looking pretty cool. I think it will sit better once it's on rather than lying flat like it is at the moment. So next I need to decide if it's big enough and I'm going to just hold it up to my neck. And it's quite a good length actually. Uh, I'm wondering if it is too long because I need to add some connectors to this and it may add too much, but let's have a look. So here's all my findings. I've got a clasp, some six millimeter jump rings, some four millimeter jump rings, and I've got some connectors. And these are a three strand connector. So they basically step three strands down into one so you can put your clasp on. So the first thing we're going to do is crimp each end and attach a jump ring and our connector. So just taking one strand off my bead stopper here because I want to keep everything kind of railed in with my bead stopper and pushing everything up so it's nice and tight and I'm going to put on my crimp tube. And this is, I'm just going to crimp this in exactly the same way if I can get my crimp tubes open. There we go. So feeding on my crimp tube. Let's cut the end off that. It's a little natty and sometimes that makes it hard to thread through things. So cut the end off and it'll go through nicely. It doesn't want to go through there. There we go. Now I do need to make sure that my jump rings are really well closed for this so that the tiger tail doesn't fall out. But I am going to open them again, so not such a big deal. Feeding on my six millimeter jump ring and my crimp tube. And then I want to make sure that I capture my six millimeter jump ring inside the loop. So I'm going back down through my crimp tube. And I'm going to go back through one bead. And as you can see, everything's really loose. So I'm going to hold my, pull my crimp tube down, hold the jump ring and pull everything up. And I can do that several times until I get it the right length. And I want to make sure that all of my beads are all pushed up before I squeeze it. And I'm just continuing to do that till it's in the right place. I'm going to take my crimp tube, crimping pliers and I'm going to give it a squeeze. When I trim this end, I need to, it works best for me if I actually fold that over and kind of push the bead back on itself. If you trim it nice and close, you'll never see it. Now I'm going to repeat that with all five of my other strands. 
Now I've strung my entire necklace and I've crimped it and you can see it has its jump rings on each end. So next I need to step it down to one strand so that I can thread on my clasp and a jump ring. So I'm going to take my two pairs of chain nose pliers and open my jump rings really carefully and feed on my connector. If you haven't used jump rings before I'll leave you a link in the description box to a video all about how to use them. So I'm just opening that up and just double checking this is my top strand so that one wants to go on that way and closing that. And I want to make sure it's really well closed. I could have used a wire guardian here to protect the wire and to stop it coming out of the jump ring but I think it'll be okay. It's a choice you can make for yourself. And I'm going to repeat that with all six. Because this is a single sided necklace and I'm using a single sided connector, I do need to make sure that I get it on the right way. So I'm just lying the necklace down and putting it here and just doing it one at a time, just methodically so that I don't mix it up. And that's what that looks like. Now this it will extend the length of my necklace quite a lot, but I think that's okay in this case because the neck, I don't want the necklace sitting right close to my neck. I don't really like really tight chokers. I actually want it to sit more down kind of on my, whatever these bones are called, I can't remember. If you know, let me know. <laughs> Leave me a comment in the comment section and let me know what these bones are called. All right, so I'm going to attach my clasp with a four millimeter jump ring. And I want to make sure that I get it on my right hand side. Because I'm right handed, it's easier for me to do up a clasp using my right hand than my left hand. So to do that, I'm going to flip this piece over and make sure that it is going to sit the right way. So that works. This is my right hand side. So I know that I need to put my clasp on this side. So I'm just opening my jump ring. And I'm going to feed on my clasp first. Then I'm going to feed on my connector. And I'm going to close up my jump ring. You could use a six millimeter for this if you wanted. I just prefer a four. I've said that many times. <laughs> Just double checking that it's done up correctly. Can't see it, so that's always a good sign. So that's what that looks like. And for the other end, I'm going to put on a six millimeter jump ring, that's it. So my clasp will do up into a six millimeter. I just find that a little bit easier than a four. But this one happens to be open, I'll just thread it on and make sure it's really well closed. There is my clasp done up, isn't it pretty? It would actually make a really pretty bracelet even. It's very, it's, I think it's gorgeous. Now I am going to model this at the end, so you will have to wait for that. Now on to number two, the second way that you can introduce this layered pearl necklace trend into your wardrobe. Now this one is quite a large project. It's actually eight strands so you can imagine that's quite a big necklace and I will model it for you at the end. I'm not going to demonstrate me making the whole necklace because honestly I don't have six hours <laughs> to film and I don't think you probably have six hours to watch me but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I made each piece and then we're going to put it together. If you're interested in making the jewellery that I'm wearing today I'm wearing my layering piece here which I made a few weeks ago, and my rainy day necklace. I will leave you links to those two tutorials in the description box. And my earrings, uh, my boho earrings, now I made these in a live stream with my group, my private group. If you would like to join that group, I'll leave you a link in the description box as well. It is a great group. We're having lots of fun over there. We're sharing lots of projects and just chatting with each other. The first piece I started with is a strand of six millimeter pearls and I've got it here in front of me. It's exactly the same as we, the same technique as we used for the other necklace. I basically crimped one end, threaded on my beads and crimped the other end and that just has a six millimeter jump ring on either end. Now this one measures about 48 centimeters. So that's number one. And I'm going to show you how all the strands together once I've shown you how to make them all. Strand number two is just a piece of chain. And I'm going to attach 
some jump rings to the end of this later on. It measures about 52 centimetres, so slightly longer than the first string, strand of pearls. So with this necklace, each strand I make gets slightly longer. The third strand is a strand of pearls, but these ones are connected with loops. And I'm going to show you how I made these. They are really super simple. Now, if you haven't made loops before, I will leave you a link in the description box on how to make them. For me personally, I am going to use my one step looper. This took me ages to make. Well, the whole necklace took me ages to make just because there were so many loops and I wouldn't have liked to have done it manually. Be really good practice for you though if you are just learning and you need to learn how to make really good loops. I used some 20 gauge half hard wire and all I did was use my one step looper to make the loops. So feeding my wire through the back there and giving it a squeeze and then pulling back. Now if you haven't used a one step looper before I've got a video all about how it changed my life really and so I'll leave you a link for that one as well. Now my loop is sticking up a little bit so I'm going to give it a squeeze and check if it's closed and if you can see there it isn't it's just slightly open so I'm actually going to close it just by lifting up and moving that wire in. So there's my loop. Now this one uses an 8mm pearl so I've got one here so I'm going to thread that on just like that and now I'm going to take my one step looper again and feed that wire through the back. It's a bit wiggly so it's a bit of a challenge. There we go and bring it nice and close, bring the jaws nice and close and bring it around and as you can see it makes a loop and closes it all in one go. Once again it's not quite closed so I'm just going to bring it in and close it. Now the thing you do need to remember to do here is make sure that all of your loops are going the same way. So you just grab it, the loop, hold one loop in one side, grab the other loop and just twist your pliers until your pliers are equal, just like that. So there's my component. Now to add that to my chain here, all I'm going to do is just open my loop. Now I know that I've just closed it but the reason I did that was because it's better to close it first so that it's in the right place and then you can open it again. It just makes your loops better. One side the opening is here and one side is here. Now I'm going to hold the loop, the bead, in my hand like that and I've got the opening side on this side and I'm going to hold that loop in my pliers and just twist my hand down so that I'm opening that loop. Then I'm going to feed it on to the end and I'm going to close up my loop. One thing also to think about is that you want an uneven number generally when you're making something like this. So I've got a bead across the bottom which means that mine is uneven. So this measures approximately 26 centimetres, so uh, 40, 52. So it is about the same length as the chain. As you can see, the chain is a little bit shorter just because of that bead across the end. Okay, so that is number three strand. Let's look at number four. This one I made with six millimeter electroplated glass beads. Now I know they look like silver beads, but they are actually electroplated. If you cannot find these beads, you could absolutely use a silver bead. To join them together, I have used an eight millimeter sorry, a four millimeter black jump ring. Now the reason I used black and not silver was simply because I thought it played off the color of the beads really well. I didn't want a bright silver there, but you could use a silver four millimeter jump ring if you liked. Now to make this one, it's exactly the same process as I used on the pearls, but to join it, I did use a different process. So I've got an eight millimeter, four millimeter jump ring here, don't know why I cannot say four millimeter jump ring. I had the same problem last week. And all I'm going to do, I've got it open and I'm going to feed on my end of my chain and then my next loop of the component that I just made. And I'm going to close that up. And just double check that my jump ring is well closed. This one measures about 27 centimetres, so what's that, 40, 54. I will leave you a link in the description box to a blog post and that will contain links to everything I've used today and the numbers as well. And you will be able to see photos so you will see how it is all laid out. 
If you can't see the description box, remember you might need to click that more button to display the full description. And if you would like to see more of my videos and you'd like to be notified every time I upload one, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you will be get a notification. Also, if you're enjoying this one, give me that thumbs up. Thank you. So number four is a strand of 12 millimeter pearls and these are joined exactly the same way as we joined number three. So I'm not even gonna show you how I made those because I've already demonstrated. This one measures approximately 29 centimeters. So that is uh, 60, 58. <laughs> number six is another strand of pearls just threaded up the same way as I did with the other necklace. And this one measures, let me see, it's approximately 23 times three is 69 centimeters. Good uh, maths today. Now the next one is a piece of chain. And this is quite a chunky chain, as you can see. And I just used the chain on its own. And I really liked the fact that I've used a finer chain here and a bulky chain here. It, I think it just works well off each other. This one measures approximately 24 centimetres, so that times three is 60, 72, increasing as we go. And as I said, there'll be links, a link with everything in it in the description box. The last one, so that was number seven, and number eight is this one here. So I've used the same chain, and what I've done here is I've attached some pearls to it. Okay, now I am gonna show you how to make these because these are slightly different than what we've done before. And I may as well measure this while I've got it here. So this one measures 80 centimeters. Okay, so it's quite a bit longer, this one. So to make these, all I did was I took a head pin and this one has a bend in it, so I'm gonna give it a straighten. And then I fit on my 12 millimeter bead like that. Then I took my one step looper and made a loop. Now, if you don't have a one step looper, you can make the loops manually. And in hindsight, I probably should have used my three millimeter one step looper instead of my 2.25. So there we go, that's what I have. And now I'm going to open my loop and I'm going to attach it to my chain. You want an uneven number of pearls so that one hand's in the center, and that is what I've already got. So I'm gonna put one on and then I'm gonna take it off. So I'm just opening my loop, and I have to open it quite wide to get it on here. The best way to do this is to hold your chain like this. You wanna make sure that the pearls are all on the bottom of the link. So you can see here, this one's on the bottom, this one's on the bottom, and it's every second link. So I'm gonna skip this one, and I'm going to put it onto this one here. And I find the best way is to hold the pearl and kind of fold the chain back on itself. And then you'll be able to do it up. And you want to make sure that all of your pearls are on the bottom end of the chain so that they all hang the right way. Otherwise, they'll flip over and they won't look right. I want to hang on the inside. That was the last strand of pearls. So here's all of my pieces that I've made, all of my strands. And this is a really, really good project to do while you're binging that Netflix show because you can do it without thinking too much about it, making all those loops, and it is um, quite time consuming. I'm going to attach them now. I've got two of these connectors and these have 10 holes and I only have eight strands. But I did want to kind of space out the end two. These two bigger ones, I thought I'd put a space between them. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna start off with this one here and I am going to use this jump ring. For every other strand, except the other strand of pearls, I'm going to attach a jump ring. But for this one, I've already got the jump ring in place. So I'm going to open my jump ring. And I'm going to feed on one side of that connector. I don't think it has a right and wrong side, it doesn't look like it. And then I'm going to close that up. Now I think I'll do both ends at the same time because if I do it individually, I'm going to get it twisted, I just know I am. So I'm going to go ahead and attach the other end to the other connector. So 
So I want to double check that both of my, I'll just wind this up in the middle so you can see what I'm talking about, that both of my connectors are connected to the right hole. So you can see they're both at the top and then the next one is going to be this one and I'm going to methodically go through and do that. So with the chain, taking a jump ring, this one just happens to be open which is great. I'm going to feed on the last link of the chain and then I'm going to feed on this second hole of my connector and close up my jump ring. And I'm going to repeat that for the other end as well. And I'm just double checking after every addition. So there we go, you can see it that the chain is hanging slightly longer and that my connectors are both the right way around. So my strand of pearls should actually be on the inside. So I want my strand of pearls on the inside always. This time I'm going to use a jump ring just like before and attach this one here. I might actually attach it to the connector first. I think that's easier. Just pushing everything else out of the way and then feeding on my loop and closing everything up. And then I'm going to make sure nothing's twisted <laughs> and I'm getting it right and I'm going to go down and do the other end. So there's strand number three. Now it looks like on camera, it looks like those two strands are exactly the same length, but they're not. Well, the chain is slightly shorter than the uh, pearl, the, the strand of pearls. I'm going to go ahead and attach all of those. And I'll come back when I get to the big chain. This is where I'm at now. And I'm going to attach my chain next. I'm going to do it in the same way. I just thought I'd show you because it's just a little bit trickier with that big heavy chain. So I'm going to open my jump ring really, really wide and I'm going to feed on the chain first this time. I'm actually going to hold it like this and then I'm going to, I'm actually going to skip a hole and put it in the next one over and then I'm going to close up my jump ring really carefully. This is getting quite heavy at this point. that's what that looks like. And then I'm going to do the other end making sure I'm not twisting it, just pulling everything down. Just double checking everything as I go. Here we go. It's so big I can't put it all on camera. <laughs> that's why I need to model it for you. I can't possibly show you in one go. <laughs> and the last chain I'm going to put on in exactly the same way but I do need to make sure that I get it facing down so that my pearls are facing down. So the down part is this bit so I've only got I've got two holes left and I'm going to put it in the end one. As I said I felt like this chain just needed a little bit of extra space. I'm going to repeat that for the other end. Now just a quick word, if you feel like these are not going to hold the weight you could use split rings here or you could add two jump rings, up to you. I feel like it's going to be okay so I'm not going to do that. There we go, it's not looking fabulous. I just love it. <laughs> All right, now we need to put on a clasp. And I did choose a toggle clasp here because of the weight of the necklace. I didn't think that a lobster clasp would actually hold or it would kind of feel a little bit uh, teeny weeny compared with the bulk of the necklace. So I've chosen a toggle clasp. So it's got a bit of weight to it. And I chose platinum because of the color of these beads. So I wanted to kind of marry that up. 
and this is a Tibetan style so it's not really a bright silver anyway. So I'm going to take a jump ring and thread on my loop here and my clasp and I'm going to do up my jump ring. Now I don't need to worry so much about which side the clasp is on with a toggle clasp. I don't have any trouble doing those ones up. There is one side done. All the way to the other end and do the same thing. So there is my complete necklace. Now just a word about twisting. So I did not, I chose not to twist my necklace or my strands but when you put it on you can twist it if you want to and you can just twist it either way and that way it won't hang quite so kind of prissy layer layer layer. You can just give it a bit of a twist if you want to. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to go away, I'm going to put this on and I am going to show you what it looks like. Here are my necklaces. I absolutely love them. Now I did end up shortening the choker just because it was a little bit too long and when I remade it I did add some wire guardians. If you've never added wire guardians before and don't know what I'm talking about, watch this video. If you want to avoid my mistake and always get your necklaces the right length, watch this video. Thank you so much for watching today. Have a wonderful day and I will see you again next week with another tutorial.